usually when I come to you as a cooking cowboy, I'm to tell you a story about cooking or show you how to make something in the style that the cowboys did and they did in the earlier days of the country. But today I'm going to tell you about a skillet, more specifically a steel skillet. When most people see this skillet, the first reaction, oh, it's cast iron. Well, actually it's not. Here's a cast iron skillet. I use it too, but the steel skillet is my favorite. The cast iron, the handle is made of cast and part of the skillet. And the down part of that is when this skillet gets hot, the heat follows out and the, and the handle is hot. So you always have to handle it with a cup towel or mitt or something or burn yourself. The difference is this has what they call the cool handle. Along about 1870 they had two inventions. One, The first one was adding carbon to iron to make it steel. The second was it was malleable and they invented rolling mills so they could roll it out in sheets or form it in other forms, but once it rolled into sheets, the next thing was the stamping mill is operated by steam and had dies on it. It would stamp out steel items in any shape that they wanted. So they could now stamp out skillets instead of making them out of cast iron. And they could turn out several skillets in a minute where it take uh, an hour or longer to cast a cast iron skillet. So it reduced the cost of them considerably. And the leading company making them was Empire. And they also invented the cool handle. This is actually two pieces of steel, the skillet itself, and another piece stamped that goes over the top of it. And it was known as the cool handle. And up here it says Pat Pending 79. So they patented that handle in 1879. And a lot of other companies tried to duplicate it, but they had all sorts of patent infringement lawsuits and everything else. So the Empire was the iron skillet of its day. Being made of stamped steel, the steel skillet is much lighter. In fact, this one is probably half the weight or less of, than it would be of the same size in cast iron. Cast iron also tended to uh, crack at times if it was heated too hot. But the downside of the steel skillet was it would rust if it wasn't properly protected. So it had to be seasoned the same way as an iron skillet to keep it from, from rusting. And also that was a non-stick finish. It was the first non-stick skillet ever made. Well, these lasted about 50 years, and they came out with stainless steel, which is nice and shiny and attractive, and everybody forgot about the, the steel skillet, and they were thrown aside and discarded and everything else. But in that 50-year period, it had served its purpose for many things. It was easy to carry by the people moving west. It made a gold pan when they weren't using it for cooking. And actually, it made a pretty good weapon in a fight. This skillet is actually older than I am. The story is my dad had it in his batching days before he and my mother got married in 1926. And growing up as a kid, it was the standard skillet you saw on the stove. And it was around the family until I left home. And when my parents died and I went over to clean out the house, there was that skillet hanging on a nail next to the stove. So I took it home with me. I knew it was important and I've been using it ever since. I also like to take it with me on camping trips because you could cook over a campfire with it just as well as you can a burner. And it great breakfast made in it on a, on a campfire. They're hard to find these days, usually only in an antique store, and then they're fairly expensive. I saw one on eBay uh, was priced at $125, and it was 
look like mine here, but far more than any cast iron skillet would ever cost. If you do find one and can buy it at a garage sale or something like that, pick it up. It's a rare find. If you ever use one for a while, you'll never go back to anything else.